Hey everybody, I want to do a quick update about Korea's web form. So I know there's a bunch of information that's come out and there's lots of confusion. Uh, so as of December 31st, uh, the old version, the legacy version of uh, web forms is no longer. And if you have any old transactions in the old web forms, you have to manually transfer those over. So we had a training a few weeks back here in December where we had someone come in special from our for our office and do uh, do that training. I'll put the link to that full recording down below and then give you the full background on why they made the change, etc. But the bottom line is it's a great new tool. Um, the biggest shortcoming I see right now is the fact that it requires uh, connection to the internet. So for like rural users and mobile, um, you need to have access to the internet. But once you have access to the internet, it's a very powerful full transaction management tool. So we've done some extra steps for you at the office level uh, that I think are gonna save you tons of time and make uh, make everybody lots more money potentially because uh, uh, make you a lot more efficient. So we've created checklists of every type of file that you would submit that has all of the forms listed on that checklist. So I'm just gonna log in here and I'll show you guys where everything is. So when you're logging in and you go to create template uh, and or I'll show you a list of all of them under this is under my brokerage login um, for transaction templates. So under the office uh, options, we have FinTrack with all the FinTrack forms and an explanation about them as well as a link to the video on FinTrack that we'll be creating. Uh, personal trades with a training video link to that and all the forms you need as far as realtor forms and things like that, the realtor disclosure forms, and then residential, condo, buyer, buyer for a house, buyer brokerage, customer status, residential seller for a condo, seller for a house, and rental rep, which I'll talk about briefly as well. So when you go back to your main dashboard, Instead of searching for one-off forms, this is what's gonna save you a ton of time every file. So you click Create Transaction, and in this case, I'm just gonna call it Testing, and then under Template, this is the key step here, here's the list of all of those templates. Now you can create your own as well, so if you have you know, uh, your own organization method that you wanna do based on the nature of your practice, you can do that, but we've gone ahead, Shane and I spent a ton of time, and with the help from Condensing, to create these checklists. So if I have a, a house seller that I'm assisting, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna select this from the list because there's nothing from MLS to import. If I was doing a house buyer, uh, you could import MLS data and you are the selling agent and you want use wizard checked off. So if you do this, click create, you can add all the information in, it's gonna auto pop into the contracts, etc. And so you can put in as much information as you have on it uh, that you want to include there. I'll just do the basics for now. So you can do the list price keep notes and whatnot, including chattels, things like that. And this is purchase information. So you can fill out as much of this as you want. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be residential property. And I can choose a list date. So I'm gonna list it, say, Thursday for a couple months, end of March. And contacts, I can add in here other contacts. So if I wanted to add in the the seller or, or both sellers into there, I can do that by uh, creating a new transaction or add an existing contact if they're already in there, or you can add contacts from your Google account. So if you use the office's Google My Business account, like you have a rivercityrealestate.ca email address, you can import them and set this up to import and sync from your Google contacts. So again, saving tons of time, making it super easy there. And boom, when you get to step four here, Wow, here's every form you're gonna need for that contract. Here's consumer relationship, and in the order you should be using them or you should be presenting them, or you can print them and you can send them right to DocuSign. So right from this, consumer relationship, here's your FinTrack, 
here's your seller rep agreement, here's an amendment termination uh, as applicable, and say there's this is in here just in case, so tenancy schedule, but if you don't need that one, you can delete it. So you keep yourself nice and organized or everything's in there. So let's say this doesn't need anything tenant related, I'm gonna get rid of the tenant photo consent, uh, any defect disclosure, if there's dower applicable, a dower purchase, and then any other a general notice uh, for the seller void option if needed. So all the forms you need are right there. And for some reason, it gives you a fax cover sheet every single time that I don't know why. And when you're done, this is your transaction. So you can add a photo if you wanna put a photo of the property that you have for either easier reference. Here's all the basic details of your listing. You can scroll up and down in here. And you can add documents in. So if you have other documents, this is your complete file on that, on that client. You can import documents, use this to save everything. And then I'm gonna show you the step here of if you wanted to use DocuSign or another uh, uh, electronic e-signature, this is the critical step for that. So say in this case, we're gonna send them the consumer relationship brochure and the seller rep agreement. This is the step. So I've checked off these two. I go to cart and at the top of cart, I could choose to remove that right now if I wanted. So I'd have to go back and add it back in. I go to the cart and right here is send to DocuSign. So I've done the step of connecting my DocuSign to uh, web forms, um, which is an, an easy thing to do. I'll put a, a link below on how to do that. Once you've done that, there it is. It's right in DocuSign. Now I'm gonna want to change who I'm sending this to. So I'm gonna go back here. And if I didn't put anybody in, I now have to add those recipients in. And I can change, move my face out of the way here. <laughs> I can change the subject and uh, put in a proper email signature, et cetera. Da da da, put your phone number and all that kind of thing. So hi, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. As discussed, and this should not be the first time that someone's seeing something from you is when you're sending them over for electronic signature doesn't hold up in court and uh, doesn't protect you in any way. So it also doesn't provide great customer service. So you should be explaining it to them and whatnot and you've made the decision to sign electronically now, maybe a week later or something after you've met them. Both these contracts are attached. I could also upload right now any other documents that I had separately that wasn't kept in web forms, but it's easier to keep it all together. So I've list listed both parties. I have to put an email address in here, so I'm just gonna use my own. As an example, uh, hold on. I'll use my, my other email. And then I can go right in here and add everything related to those documents. So this is where I'm gonna add in the sign date just click on each one of these. Here's the consumer's signature, the consumer's name, and then I go down to the contract. And right in here, if there was any other information, see how it's auto-populated that? Now, if there was any other information that I needed to fill in, like this, you edit it back in forms. But I can now go in and put in the initials for everybody. So a rep agreement, initials, and proceed like that to fill out the rest of the contract with everyone's initial spots and click send and it's going to send you and send the email to both uh, both parties and via DocuSign and then push you back into uh, web forms. So for this purpose, I'm going to uh, cancel this so you can see it back. it should put me back right into web form. So now I can go into transactions and I can see here my transaction that I just created and it'll keep all your forms together. If you now need to do an amendment for that deal, boom, it's right in here. Here's the amendment. 
And so you would simply go to forms and now you go and open the amendment. And this is the same way you could edit any of the other forms. And so right in here, I would put in uh, information. I can fill out the amendment. Oh, this is the seller rep agreement. I must have clicked the wrong one there. And uh, it's gonna save each one of those steps. So if I was now doing the amendment and I wanted to do an amendment to price or whatnot, everything's saved in there automatically. So it's super easy to use once you get the hang of it. I know there's been lots of rumblings already on Facebook that I've seen of people complaining uh, that they don't think it's a good tool. It's mostly because you didn't take any effort to learn it and, uh, and not a lot of brokerages have organized uh, training in-house training. So we are appreciated to see so many of you come out for that. And I think it really is a great tool if you, if you learn it. So uh, hopefully that helps and feel free to reach out to myself or uh, any of the other staff too. And uh, everyone else is still learning it, but uh, our goal is to help you. So if you need assistance, feel free to reach out and that's what we're here for. Talk soon.